22 minutes past seven. There are real problems with the way the most important drink in the world is grown. I'm talking about tea, obviously. What else? And the problem is we've never known much about the genetics of tea. Until now, there's been a big breakthrough, meaning what? Well, Andrew Gadsden is the saviour of tea. Well, that's how he describes himself. He's got a tea shop in Portsmouth and a tea blending and packing company. Good morning to you. Good morning. What do we need to know about the genetics of tea? This is, as, as you just said, the, the most important culture and economic drink in the world. It's the most widely consumed beverage after water. Right, and let's settle now... for that. It's great. Tea is wonderful. <laughs> Go on, what's wrong with it? What's the problem? Tea is a ticking time bomb. Um, there are vast tracts of Kenya which rely upon fertiliser to make tea work. The soil has been depleted. There are vast tracts of India where um, the tea plants are exhausted and they need to be replaced, but they can't be yeah. because we can't afford to do it. This work has been done in China. Um, China has to use vast quantities of fertiliser and pesticide, and we in the UK often can't then import that tea because the EU says the pesticide levels are too high, and right. rightly so. And so this work will help us to understand tea better, and we're now realising how complex it is, four times more complex than coffee. Hang on, we're not going to end up with genetically modified tea, are we? Because you'll be in real trouble if that's the case. A lot of people will make a lot of fuss. Well, this is one of the suggestions, and yes, they would make a lot of fuss, and this is a huge problem. So, you know, to read some of the press articles about this, you'd think that this was some kind of Harry Potter, every flavour bean solution to tea. <laughs> you know, do you want strawberry flavoured tea? Well, well, no. And if we're talking about that, we're talking about genetic modification, which of course is a huge, a huge issue. However, there's something absolutely fascinating in this report. They they note that many of the Many of the there are lots of duplicates in the in the genome. Um, it's like a book with a with three billion words, mm -hmm. but the middle pages of those have all been copied and pasted. And they speculate, um, and they want to do more research on this. They speculate that that duplication has occurred as a result of breeding. So that raises the interesting question: Have we genetically modified tea, and therefore possibly other plants as well, by breeding? Ah, and the answer to that is. Well, we don't know. Nobody yet, knows. And no. they, they want to do more research into it. Right. But but the, look, you've got 30 seconds to explain why it is that in a few years time, maybe we won't have the same crisis that you say the industry is facing at the moment. This will enable us to breed better tea plants that right. are better suited to a wide range of climates, which are more disease resistant and which produce a better quality tea. Right. They yield better tea, which is therefore more, more economically viable in the market. But it'll still taste like it does today. It'll still, well, it'll taste even better, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Gadsden, thanks very much indeed. 25 past seven. Rob is here without tea, but he does have <laughs> the sports news. I had my tea earlier, Nick. Thank you very much.